Groove Time. Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my Objective C tutorial. In this presentation, I'm going to cover looping, decision making, and a bunch of rhythmic operators available to you in Objective C. Every modern day programming language provides a way for you to perform actions through looping. They also do it in a very similar way. The most common looping tool is called the for loop. Let's say you wanted a program that printed out the numbers 1 to 100. Well, if so, you're in a lot of luck because I made one just for you using the for loop. I've gone over most of this code in previous tutorials, so I'll just explain how the for loop works in this example. The basic format of a for loop you can see down here in the lower left hand corner. After the for keyword, you define the starting value for the variable that you are going to iterate after the opening brace. By iterate, I just simply mean change in some way. Then you define under what conditions you will continue looping. And to finish off this loop, you define by how much you will increment the variable. In the example, I'm stating I want to continue looping while i is less than or equal to 100. The code that will be executed lies between the two curly braces. In this case, I'm printing the value of i to the screen. By including the new line statement, which is a backslash followed by the letter n, each number will be printed on individual lines. Here are all the relational options operators available to you to have the greater than, greater than or equal, less than, less than or equal, equal or not equal to relational operators. You can create even more complicated comparison statements by using what is called a logical operator. If we wanted to loop as long as i is less than or equal to 100 and i is not equal to 50, you would just simply do that by inserting these two and signs between these two checks. Here are a couple more logical operators available like I said before and we could also use or or to change a definition to a negative we would just simply put an exclamation point in front of it and it would perform the absolute opposite result and to clarify that let's say as we're doing here we're checking that I is not equal to 50 well, in this circumstance let's say I is equal to 40 well normally then that would return a value of true however if I put the exclamation point in front of that same check it would return a value of false. So that's how the not logical operator works. You might also be wondering what this statement here means where I have i followed by a plus sign equals and then the number one. It means that you want the current value of i to be added to one and then reassigned back to the variable named i. And here is another shorthand way in which you can increment a variable by the value of one and then reassign it back to that variable. And you can also use this shorthand code with negative multiplication as well as division operations. I also just wanted to make sure that you understand you don't specifically have to stick to this for statement definition exactly. If you wanted to find the iterated variable outside of the for loop, the for statement would instead look like what you can see here, which is just simply a semicolon. You could also define multiple variables in a for loop, as I show you here in this example, as I'm finding the variables i and x inside of the same for loop. Another tool available for looping is the while loop. It is used when your initial variable, looping condition variables, or iterator variable are different from each other. And its basic syntax is while followed by just the looping condition, then you would have an opening curly brace followed by your code, and then finished off with the iterator. Here is how you would perform the same act with the while loop as you did previously, which would be simply just creating a while loop that would print out the numbers one, through 100 onto the user's screen. If you want to make sure the code in the body of the loop is executed at least one time, you would use the do while loop. And you can see its basic syntax here on your screen. Make sure you don't forget, however, to put the semicolon after the while statement because this is a common error. And here I'll use the do while statement to perform the same loop as I did previously with the for loop as well as the while loop. If you ever want to immediately leave a loop, when a certain condition is met, you would use the break statement. And it looks like this, it's just simply the word break followed by a semicolon. Remember that if you nest loops inside of each other, however, that break will only jump you out of the current loop that the break lies in. It will not jump you out of both of the nested loops. The continue statement, which is just the word continue followed by a semicolon, will jump you back to the beginning of the loop and continue iterating. All statements that follow it in the loop are skipped, but you are not jumped completely out of the loop 
loop altogether. It is used to bypass certain statements under certain conditions. There are three tools available to you for making decisions in Objective-C. First, you have the if statement followed by the switch and then you have the conditional operator. The most common way to make decisions is through the use of the if statement. And you can see its basic syntax here, which is just the keyword if followed by a condition. You can also see on this slide, you can use an if or else statement. So what we're gonna do here is if the condition is not true, then we're gonna perform that code that lies within the curly brackets after the keyword else instead. Or you can use compounded if statements. Here, what I'm doing is I'm gonna check a condition and if that doesn't work, then I'm gonna check another condition with the else if keyword phrase. And then if that doesn't work, by default, I'm going to process the code that lies between curly braces after the keyword else. Here I'm actually providing real code that's gonna check if someone can legally drink, vote, or drive. First, I'm gonna check if they're 21. If they are, then I'm gonna print out to the screen that the person can drink, drive, and vote. Then I'm following that up with an else if statement if their age is greater than 18. If it is, I'm gonna print out you can drive and vote, and you probably get the point. The switch statement is commonly used for decision making as well when you know ahead of time all of the possible values that are available for the variable that you're going to check. And you can see on the right side of the screen the basic syntax of the switch statement. Here's a real world switch statement in which we are checking what value is assigned to the variable name number entered. If the number entered was zero, we're gonna print out to the screen, you entered zero. Let's jump down here and look at case two followed by case three. What this is doing is if the person entered a value of two or three, we're gonna print out to the screen, you entered a two or a three. And take special note where we're using the keyword break to jump completely out of the switch statement in both of these circumstances whenever we hit on a value because if we hit on that value we don't want to jump down into the default statement which is going to say you entered a number bigger than there's three. also a shorthand way to perform decisions in objective c and it's called the conditional operator you can see its basic syntax here in the second bulleted item and a real world example in which we are checking whether a character has been assigned the character m and depending upon what variable has been assigned, we're either going to assign the string male or female back to the variable, which in this circumstance is person sex. Above, I already showed you the shorthand way to perform arithmetic in Objective-C. And if you have any experience in programming, I bet you already know how to perform arithmetic, but probably not casting. But just in case, I provide examples of all the arithmetic operations. Probably the only one you've never seen is the modulus, which is the very last bolded item. And what it does is it returns the remainder of a division. So in this example here, I have five modulus two, it's gonna return one because the remainder of that division would be one. If you want to convert an integer into a double or any other type of casting, you need to use the casting operator. And here are some examples. In the second bulleted item here, I'm performing a multiplication and then turning the result of that multiplication into an integer. And in the second example, by placing the characters int inside of brackets in front of the number 1.23, I'm converting that decimal placed number into a simple integer with the value of one. And then I'm going to perform the multiplication. But this cast is not going to cast the value of 4.56 because I don't have the cast in front of that specific number. It's just making that change to the first integer. So in this specific example, double number would be assigned the value of 4.56. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to go completely through object-oriented programming with Objective-C. If you have any questions, leave them in a comment section below. Till next time.